Welcome, dear hearts, to Nine's Corner. Hi, I'm Nina. I'm a tarot reader for 30 years. So if this is your first time here, hi, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. And if you're returning, welcome back, my dear hearts. You know how much I care for you. So please feel free to like the video before we even start so we can get into this interesting video. We're going to do um, a couple of different readings. I wanted to read on Garth Brooks because he's been in the news recently. Obviously, you're going to read on the election to see how uh, how things are going to turn out. And I thought it'd be interesting to do a reading as to how the first couple of days are gonna go because the cards will give us some insight as to how the environment's going to feel. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and I thought we could end it by taking a little walk on my property because we, um, we built a little pathway with some gravel and some sods and stuff like that so we could walk across the the bog, <laughs> the water, the bog, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I thought I'd take you on a little tour of the property and that way you can have some time to think about what number resonates with you. You choose a number that gives you the advice that you need for going forward after the election. So I think it's going to be a very interesting read. I really do. So let's get straight into it. And I'm going to be using new cards that I love. And it's the Dark Mansion Tarot. Dark Mansion Tarot. So, I thought our first question, let's look at Garth Brooks. Yeah, Tom, I've looked at the lawsuit. The allegations here are stunning. They are detailed. They are graphic. And while I'll spare some of that detail here, I think it's important to issue a trigger warning to anyone watching. The suit names the alleged victim as Jane Rowe, the makeup artist first hired by Brooks's wife, Trisha Yearwood, who started working with Brooks on gigs back in 2017. The filing, however, stems from allegations in 2019, alleging Brooks repeatedly exposed himself to Rowe, shared inappropriate sexual advances and messages enforced inappropriate touching. And according to the suit, this reaches a boiling point in May of 2019, where Roe alleges that she is raped by Brooks in a hotel room while they're on a work trip. And the sexual remarks even increase in volume, according to the suit, after that incident. Now, I am having, I'm having some feelings about doing this reading because I do like Garth Brooks. I went to see him when he was in Halifax many, many years ago had a great concert. I've always liked him. I've always liked him and, and Trisha Yearwood together. And, you know, I, I have no negative feelings towards him. So I'm, I was shocked, surprised and horrified and hoping that it's not true. We just got a cards come out. So I'm going to leave those out because I felt that they, they flew out to tell us a story. So let's have a look and see. Garth Brooks. First off, we've got the Queen of Pentacles. So this, in Garth's past, coming up to this relationship or, or this interaction with this person, they were on equal footing. They both equally liked each other. It doesn't look like there's anything here ne nefar nefarious. Um, it just looks like he was just trying to find where he belongs and he's kind of living his life. And when they met, they both equally liked each other. There was no, that's just sort of it. They liked each other. Then we at the present, we've got the devil, meaning that a negative cycle is starting, a negative cycle for him, where it's just going to be obstacles and problems coming up at him. Now, on top of this, we've got the six of pentacles. So he wants to be cleared of all of this. He does, he does not um feel in any way shape or form that this should be happening he's feeling very um um he wants to be cleared of this wrongdoing he wants to have his reputation back he wants to have his peace of mind back this is really really torturous for him because on the bottom we've got the wheel of fortune which is cycles and because we've got the devil we know this is a negative cycle so there's going to be some negative things coming into his life that he's going to have to get through. But the outcome card is strength. Strength will focus on the past. It will focus on things that have had, that have come to pass that he's going to have to deal with. But these obstacles will be overcome one by one. Um, I feel as though there was this friendship that was there. 
It might have been a bit fun or flirtatious, but that's normal. And I, I don't mean that in any kind of sexual content. I just mean like in a normal, everyday, you know, you talk to somebody, hey, how's it going? Uh, you could joke around with them about certain things. Like that's the kind of relationship that they had. And now she's taking advantage of him because he's got the strength card. All the cards are saying that this is a negative cycle for him, that the negative things are going to be coming out and he's going to have to... Um, clear his name and he has the strength to do it so I think there could have been some some relationship there that he thought was you know perfectly platonic but a bit of fun and she decided that she did not like it she did not find it platonic or fun and she thought she could make a dollar off it so that's that's what's coming forward for me so that was Garth Brooks. I don't know how you guys feel about that situation or if you've heard about it, but that's the reading on it. And we're gonna go straight into a reading and find out who's going to win the election. Is it going to be Kamala Harris or is it gonna be Donald J. Trump? Let's look and see what the final outcome cards are. Um, vote, 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 vote. Okay, Kamala. And Trump. So uh, we've got the temperance card, balancing things out, having to, um, this is a big yes card, that yes, this is a, a winning card. She has to balance things out. There's going to be a lot of, um, no matter which way it's going to go down, there's going to be a group of unhappy people. The United States is very split right now, 50-50, and it's hard uh, as a Canadian looking at it, because whatever happens to the U.S. directly affects Canada, we kind of, you know, we're the little brother who does everything the same as the big brother. And, um, you know, if we end up with Kamala Harris, then, you know, I think our friendship and everything in Canada will still have our free border and everything will be okay. If we end up with Donald J. Trump, we could be looking at tariffs and years of our friendship being split apart. So far, we have temperance for Kamala and for Donald Trump, the two of pentacles. So with the two of pentacles, he's not going to be willing to accept that, that Kamala is going to win. He's not going to be willing to, um, give in to defeat. He's going to try to win the election. He's going to try to over to um, rig the election. He's going to try to, um, he's, he's going to lose his mind. He's, 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 this is like, he's got two situations happening and he's got to get this straightened out. Now, the two of pentacles is a maybe, the temperance is a yes. I'm thinking it's going to go to Kamala Harris, but with the two of pentacles here, Donald Trump is not going to be a happy camper about it. And I feel as though the election is going to be very, very close. And we've got to be worried about something coming up. With the seven of pentacles, looking back and, and seeing how things went. See, I'm nervous because it's a close reading. Temperance makes me feel like Kamala will get the edge. But I feel like there's a lot of a lot of unknown sway that's going towards Donald Trump that we're not even aware of. And I'm worried that the temperance card could be her trying to calm people down saying, listen, it's okay. We'll survive four years of Donald Trump. Guys, I really, I can't, I, I, it's like splitting hairs here. Kamala. I got the sun, Donald Trump, the wheel of fortune. Are you kidding me? Just look at this. Kamala, I got the sun. I got Donald Trump, the wheel of fortune. I think it's going to be a tight race. I think Kamala is going to take it, but Donald Trump is not going to take it well. And he's not going to just, 
um, walk away. It's going to cause a kerfuffle, especially the first week. And that's what we're going to do. You know what? Let's look at the first week after the election and see how the cards lay, because that may give us more feeling as to what's happening. Because it feels like it's really, really close. I'm, I'm afraid that my want for Kamala to win may be skewing my my uh, thoughts about the reading. Let's have a look at the first week. Wheel of Fortune. The first day is going to be the Wheel of Fortune. It's just going to be a cycle. We're going into a cycle. It feels like we're, we're coming to this point where all of our thoughts and ideas and all the process and processes and everything that's been happening is finally coming to this, this day where it's just going to be like this and we're just going to feel this cycle of news that's going to happen. It's going to be like, wow, this has happened. It's finally happened. We've got the sun out. I still feel, I, again, I'm going to say that I feel like Kamala Harris is going to win. It may not be, um, you know, a blue wave, but I still feel like she's going to win. This is what's telling me in the first couple of days. And we've got the two of cups. She's going to come out and she's going to have a message of let's get together. Let's come together. Let's bring us together. No matter who you voted for, let's do what's best for America. So I think based on the cards that are showing up the week after, we're looking at Kamala winning, but it's going to be a tight race. And Donald Trump is not going to just say, okay, that's fine. He's going to cause a kerfuffle. We could cause some, it's going to be a wheel of fortune. Some cycle is going to be starting here. But I feel, I, I feel, I feel fairly confident saying that I feel like Kamala is going to take it, but it really could be a tight race. Like it really could go to Donald Trump. Because this Wheel of Fortune is there again. And that was Donald Trump's card. So. What do you think, guys? How, how do you feel? Do you feel like it's going to be a Harris win? Are you stressed about a Trump win? Like, where, where does your feelings lie? How do you feel it's going to happen? Leave it in the comments below. Let me know. So now that we've got our political reading done, let's have a reading for ourselves. How do we move forward? How, what should we be thinking, feeling? What advice can we have going forward after the election, for the week after the election? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little video here so you can have some time to think about which, which number resonates with you. One, two, or three. Go to that number in the video. I'll put the timestamps below and you can see what advice you need to go forward. Group one, what's your card for your advice? We've got reflect. What does standing still reveal? Great blue heron. 
Dropping into stillness takes but a moment, and yet there are times when it sounds like the hardest thing to do. It isn't. You have the capacity to quiet your mind and connect with your knowing, no matter what else is happening. Great Blue Heron says, Come stand in the river with me. Let us be still together and watch for ripples below the surface. Whatever preceded Great Blue Heron's presence today, imagine it rolling off your body. As it hits the water, allow it to be held there, paused. If it's yours to take up again, it will still be there afterwards. And if it isn't, let that be the answer. For now, it's only you and Heron wrapped in silence. Next to you, a sudden stabbing and swallowing by your companion. He tightly recoils his neck and sinks back into the patient waiting. Insights reveal themselves in their own time and in their own space. Great Blue on Heron says, sometimes we must stop moving and let them find their way to us. Group two. What card do you need to have information from? What advice do you need? We've got, am I ready to be seen? Soar, the bald eagle. The majestic bald eagle traveling the open air is mesmerizing, isn't it? The freedom, the power, the height. Each sighting a gift of inspiration and validation. You're doing great. Keep going and don't give up. When self-doubts weigh us down, the thought of taking flight and being seen for who we really are may keep us grounded. Even when we receive flashes of insight, we might second-guess ourselves amongst the sensory and information overload of the modern world. We may fear being misunderstood, drawing too much attention to ourselves, or that others will accuse us of trying to rise above the stations we were born into. And yet, each of us can probably name others whose personal journeys motivated and energized our own. After all, we are creatures of observation. Like eagles, we learn to fly by watching and then by practicing. We need role models, including you. When we witness another chasing dreams, being authentic or telling the truth, it could activate our own bravery. Today, you are being called to soar with the bald eagle. Whether to inspire yourself or others, only time will tell. Have the courage to take flight and find out no matter who's watching. So for group three, your card. Oops. It wouldn't be a nine a reading if I didn't drop all the cards. I say it every time and every time it's true. Group three. We've got Claire. What kind of release would protect clarity in my space? Striped skunk. You know when something's off, right? Whether it's mental or emotional fog, spiritual disconnection, feeling threatened, or something else, it's time to open up a release valve. But how? Ignoring Stripe Skunk's warning signals is risky. He's unlikely to run away. Instead, he'll take aim and spray an odorous musk that says, go away. You can too. If, when, you detect threats to your personal sovereignty, Call forth your inner striped skunk. Override any tendency to retreat, give in, or choose another path. You have the right to set boundaries and clear out people or beliefs or ideas trying to take over your space. If others think that stinks, not your problem. Skunk offers this exercise for, for discerning what to clear. So that is our reading for this week. I'm so like, guys, I really, really appreciate you coming by and having a look. I know that I haven't been putting out very many videos. I've been super busy with moving and with starting a new job. My birthday was last week, so I turned 53. So that's getting <laughs> making life harder as every year goes by. Um, a lot's been going on in my life. And it's uh, not been allowing me to have a lot of free time to do my tarot readings, which I miss. And then sometimes I think, should I give up the channel because maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I'm winding down and I should take some time off or should just finish. But then when I think of giving up the channel, it makes my stomach sick because I'm just like, no, because, you know, you go through ebbs and flows. So maybe this is a little ebb and, you know, when the tarot readings start to flow a little bit more because time will be on my side because just trying to get Charlie back to school and the family and work and just everything has just been so much. I need my own tarot reader to give me some advice. <laughs>
So that's our reading for today. As always, my dear friends, I have our humility candle lit for each and every one of us. And until the next time we chat, take care, cheerio, and God bless.